Hi, everybody, and welcome to Connecticut Style. I'm Jocelyn Moment. I hope your day is off to a wonderful start. Coming up on our show, we will meet a woman with an inspirational story. Pat Holland Connor grew up feeling unworthy and desperate to belong. But at age 50, that all changed. She'll discuss her new book, Doorways to Significance, and share advice for finding peace, power, and passion. Plus, later on, professional gardener Colleen Plimpton is back with tips for keeping your garden colorful in August. Both Teresa and I were in the garden with her. Now, let's check in with Teresa in the kitchen. <laughs> All right, Joss, I'm here with local foodie, Stephen Fries. Welcome back to the show. Always nice to have you here. Always a pleasure. So we're having a nice summer dish today, aren't we? One of my favorites. You know, it's getting towards the end of the summer, so I said I have to come in and do my gazpacho soup, which is my own recipe. And it's a cold soup. Yes, it is. And we're using all fresh ingredients, you can see here. Uh, so... That's, that'll be great. You're going to put me to work? Do some yes, chopping? Yes, I hope you're <laughs> going to help me chop today. You have a lot of exciting things going on. You usually always do. Oh, absolutely. We'll talk about those as well. We've right. got culinary trips. We've got new columns coming out. So a whole bunch of good food stuff. All right. I can't wait to hear it. Let's get the show on the road, though, first and tell everyone what they're going to do in camera two. Sit back and relax. You're having lunch with style. These are some of the name brands you'll find at the mall, which are the same brands you'll find at Bob's. And with Bob's Friends and Family Sale Coupons, you'll find them at up to 50% off. Welcome to the family. See it at the mall. Buy it at Bob's. Are you hungry for some real summer fun? Big Y World Class Market and News 8 are giving you a chance to win everything you'll need to host a great barbecue right in your own backyard. Log on to WTNH.com and enter for a chance to win a Big Y Backyard Barbecue for 12 people. And don't miss On the Green with Gil, Thursday mornings from 5 to 7 a.m. on Good Morning Connecticut. Sponsored by Big Y World Class Market. Only the best for your family from ours. Connecticut Lighting Centers invites you to save energy and money. Today's fluorescent lighting is a smart choice for kitchens, bathrooms, and anywhere you need great light. Commercial-grade electronic ballast and instant on-off electronics ensure silent operation. And low-profile silhouettes make energy efficiency even more attractive. See our flyer at ctlighting.com and save 12% off all fluorescents. Connecticut Lighting Centers, we put the accent. These are some of the name brands you'll find at the mall, which are the same brands you'll find at Bob's. And with Bob's Friends and Family Sale Coupons, you'll find them at up to 50% off. Welcome to the family. See it at the mall. Buy it at Bob's. Never say never. Pat Holland Connor was in her 50s when she transformed her life spiritually, emotionally, and mentally from fear to self-acceptance. In her memoir, Doorways to Significance, Pat talks about her journey of finding peace, power, and passion while serving others. Pat Holland Connor joins me now. It's great to have you. Thank I'm feeling you. the energy from you. Thank All you right, so you much, You had Jocelyn. quite a childhood. You I were did. growing up in the South in the, in the 40s, mm -hmm. but you didn't quite, you didn't feel like you, you belonged. And why was that? Well, the wrong baby was sent home with the wrong family. So there were two families who uh, took home opposite babies, and I was one of those. And my parents uh, found that out about an hour or more after they took me home. And so with those uh, stories lasting, although I wasn't there, I didn't know the stories, but although they were uh, retold over and over during the course of my life, I always felt that, oh, is this really my family? Do I really belong? My family, I'm an African-American woman, and my family, um, were their skin tone was darker than my own. And so I always would look in the mirror and wonder, I am not exactly like them, or am I the same? And so it was, it but was it strange. it was your family. It was my family, yes, yes indeed. And it was, it was a traumatic experience, and yet it was that limiting belief that I held within my body and my being and my mind all of my life that limited my opportunities to feel like I really belonged in the world. So how did your family help you through this? You know, they really didn't. I'm not sure they really ever knew how I really felt. 
often we don't talk about what our deepest feelings are. We hold them within and we uh, do counter uh, our opposite things uh, to help us get over those deep seat seated feelings. Well, so how did you overcome it since nobody I was really hard. there to help you? I worked hard. I worked hard. I had to be the top of my class. I had to be the top of uh, the, uh, the, you know, my group. I had to be the group one leader for the readers group and that kind of thing. And so that's how I compensated. And because I didn't feel that I belonged and because others had difficulty accepting me because I was different. Right. You weren't I quite sure if you were part of the African American community or the other side. That's and exactly so right. You were getting acceptance from both. Is that right? That's correct. And this was during the 40s and the 50s and prior to civil rights laws. And so I didn't understand about why there was a white water fountain and a colored water fountain and how that affected me. What's different about that and what's different about me? So what, where would you go? Which line would you go? I mean, well, I would I would go to the colored water fountain would. because that's where my fat my mom okay. would take me. However, I would sneak over to the white water fountain and turn it on real quick <laughs> to see if there was any difference in the water. Well, you, you changed your life when you turned. Well, you were around your uh, when you turned around in your fifty. Is that right? Well, it or was actually 50 before that. It, it was, was after that. that. It was you know like after university days. And what what happened then was. Um, I was asked to be a token employee for one of the major corporations uh, in Houston, Texas, where I grew up. And I was the first African American hired in a major company. It was a utility company in Houston. And I remember my sociology professor saying to me and to my family, no, 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 you'll have many, many more opportunities to be the first African American in any, any organization. Mm -hmm. He was more aware of the changes in our world and in our community and in our America than my family was, and then I was. And so, uh, but needless to say, I took the job. And it was through that experience of being different, treated differently, asked to come in at a different time during the day, but also recognizing that I was not immediately, um, people weren't immediately aware that I was African American when they walked into a sea of whiteness in uh, the company. And so you, that really changed your life dramatically. Well, it, it affected me. It affected me emotionally. It affected me in every way. And the effect that it had on me was that I lived with a belief that I wasn't enough. I lived with a belief that I didn't belong, that I, you know, what I do or who I am really doesn't matter. So it limited my ability to manifest my highest good, my strong talents and abilities, my uh, ability to grow. Well, you've been able to do that now, so what advice do you have for people? How did you do it? Here's what I did. I joined the Peace Corps at age 50 after a divorce uh, for, of 30 years the biggest and the greatest adversity and devastation in my life. And rather than sulk in, uh, you know, the blues mm -hmm. of what was going on, uh, through a lot of opportunity and challenge, I was able to join the Peace Corps. And it was in being of service to others that I came to recognize not my difference, but my um, unconditional, un the unconditional love that others had for me, just as I am. And because of that, I stayed abroad. I was in the Peace Corps in Thailand and left the Peace Corps and then went to the Middle East and worked in the Middle East in Kuwait and back then to Thailand. And I'm a family therapist by training. Uh, I taught high school uh, for many years and uh, am also a substance abuse counselor. So I did many things on the road to get to being able to say yes to myself and accept myself. So what kind of advice do you have for folks who are trying to get to that point of self-acceptance? It's never too late to change the brokenness. Ever, never too late. You can make a decision today and it doesn't matter if you're 20, 30, 40, 60 or 70. It's never too late to change the brokenness in your life. What keeps people from doing that? By making a choice and a decision to seek help ask for assistance, find out what else is it that I can do, and what is the dream that you came into this lifetime uh, to be? You know, the dreams in our lives are etched in our hearts at the time we're born. And so that was kind of what I started to do was like, what is it that I really want? Well, I've always had the dream of wanting to travel and to go abroad, and I did. 
Do you think that most people who have had uh, adversities throughout their life, well, of course we all have ups and downs, we do. do they just not, are not able to turn things around because they don't realize that they need to use that to, to motivate themselves? That's quite possible. And also I believe that what many don't believe or know is that they have the answers within. Mm -hmm. All of the answers were within me. I just didn't know they were there. All right. So the name of the book, again, for everybody is Doorways to Significance, Finding Peace, Power, and Passion. And the, where can we get this book? You can get it at my website, P-A-T-H-C-O-N-N-E-R.com or Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, it's in both print and digital. Excellent. Thank you so much for Thank joining Thank you. Us. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Coming up next, Stephen Freeze shares his own refreshing recipe for gazpacho when Connecticut style returns. Now that I have assurance, I can call her doctor. With Assurance Wireless in Connecticut, you get a free phone and 250 free voice minutes each month. Now that we have assurance, we can keep in touch with our grandchildren. For $5 each month, get 500 total voice minutes. Or for $20 a month, get 1,000 total voice minutes and 1,000 texts. Now that I have assurance, I can send a quick text. All offers include a free phone, nationwide coverage, and these calling features. Plus, it's easy to keep your current number. Now that I have assurance, I can let work know I'm running late. You may qualify for assurance if you're on Medicaid or use these other services. Now that I have assurance, I can do more with more minutes. Call now to see if you qualify and learn what assurance can do for you. Call 1-800-375-5018. That's 1-800-375-5018. Or visit assurancewireless.com. Can we communicate with the dead? We truly are one of God's angels. Tonight, Primetime Nightline takes you into a mystical world of psychic phenomena and puts their visions to the test. What exactly are you seeing? Uh, it's beyond belief. Tonight at 10, 9 central on ABC. The Yankees take on the Twins Thursday at 8 on News 8. New York heads to Minnesota. Who will win the first of this four-game series? Don't miss a minute of the action. Thursday at 8 on News 8. Gazpacho soup is one of summer's simple pleasures. Local foodie Stephen Freese is back to share his own recipe using some seasonal veggies. Welcome back. Always nice to have you. Yes, I was thinking about what could we prepare today. It's been a hot summer, so this is one of my favorite soups. Cold soup. Yes. Hot summer day. All right. Well, how do we get started? I see some tomatoes here. Okay, we're going to take those tomatoes, and you can use fresh tomatoes, but I didn't see any ones that I liked that were fresh enough. So. Um, oh, you were mentioning they're probably two weeks away. Yeah, from about the two height. weeks away. So these are San Marzano tomatoes, which are quite good. So okay. we're going to put those in there and do you want to help me chop? Sure, sure okay, I do. We're going to take all these veggies and we're Should going to I just start put the them, red? Yeah, start the red and just cut them into big chunks because we're going to end up putting those into the blender. And, what about uh, the seeds? Do we want seeds? Uh, no, keep the seeds out. <laughs> if you get a few in, not a big deal. Okay. So we've got a cucumber, a red pepper, a green pepper, and we're just going to take all of these large sliced vegetables and put them into the blender. And we can do probably a half of the uh, green pepper right. just so it fits into this blender. Just like this? Am I just doing like this right? That. Perfect. <laughs> you can even make them a little bigger. Okay. I know last time uh, we did them, they were yep. too, too yep. small. Yep. <laughs> just the idea is to get them here so the uh, blades will catch them. Okay. So, uh, throw them right in? Just throw them right in, yeah. You can throw them right in. And you know, there's great food events coming up. Uh, yes, in New tell me, you're Haven. always so busy. I'm very busy. Uh, the next walking tour is going to be on September 27th. The last one sold out. We had people come from New York. Uh, it's made several major newspapers uh, publications. So uh, we're thrilled with that. And then the New Haven uh, Open with the tennis tournament, mm -hmm. they have expanded the food offerings as far as Ooh. events uh, this year. In addition to the grand tasting, there's going to be a barbecue bash with some restaurants using uh, barbecue as its inspiration. I like there's that. There's going to be a mixology class. There's going to be a champagne tasting. And there's going and to be. And this is all going to be at the tennis? Yes, yeah, so all at the tennis wow. tournament. So that's a lot of exciting that's stuff an that's incentive going on. To go check it out. Yeah. And today I have a column coming out that uh, I think uh, people that like to cook. How do you get started in a culinary career? I'm always asked that question. How do you yeah. get started? So uh, today, the column in the New Haven Register. Well, can you give us a hint before uh, we read it? Uh, sure. There's <laughs> first of all, there's six books that I've uh, read and interviewed some authors on uh, how they uh, 
Found their careers. Found their careers. And uh, put a little olive oil. I don't want the okay. people to re uh, realize. Just a splash of olive oil. Uh, how they started their careers, and people sometimes limit their idea to working in a restaurant, but there's a lot of different opportunities to uh, get involved in food, food styling. Uh, this is red wine vinegar. Okay, very good. Uh, about a quarter of a cup on that. We're going to do some salt, and I do salt to taste. You can add some salt later on. All right. And let's see, some pepper. I see hot sauce. Are we adding any of this? Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me no about problem. that. No <laughs> problem. We want a little kick in here, right? Yes, we do. And some people like to put a whole bottle of milk. <laughs> How much do you do? Uh, about four splashes should do it. How's that? A little let's more. Do a little let's, more. Uh, let's do a little more. Okay. And then we're going to take about a half a teaspoon of minced garlic and squeeze some fresh lemon in there. And do we All have right. anything included? It looks yes, like we've we got do. everything. We've got yes. everything. And, we're gonna, and then this goes right into the blender, and that's that, It goes right into huh? the blender, and that's that, yes. I see breadcrumbs. Do we need to do anything oh, with those? Oh, thank you. You're good eye. See, I'm glad, glad I'm here, eye. Stephen. <laughs> Quarter of a cup. And people always ask me why I use breadcrumbs. Yeah. It adds a little thickness to the soup, and it also adds a little flavor. These are our flavored breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. and it also adds a little texture that I like. So that's why I always experiment. All with right, and it seems things. to work out well. It sure does. And that's that, huh? You can actually make this as uh, pureed as you like, or if you like the chunks, um, Keep it just that put way. it on a little less. And let's see, I think that should do it. <laughs> and then you asked me a little while before what else I'm doing. I have a yes. column coming out on Thursday uh, talking about the Turning Stone Resort, which is in Nowheresville, New York. It's in actually but it Verona, New York. it sounds fascinating. It's 21 restaurants and wow. phenomenal spa. So that's coming you out on some Thursday. Time there. I spent a few days over there on the way <laughs> back from Maine. So I'm working on a Maine story. And then I'm going to New York City this week to scout out the food gadgets for the holidays. Last Ooh. year I did food eatable or mm -hmm. edible gifts. Sure. This year it's going to be the food gadgets for foodies. So I'm going out to New oh, York to a trade show. I can't wait to see what show. you come up with. So, yeah. so this is a whole bunch of good stuff going on. All right, we have about 30 seconds okay. left. I'm sure and you're going to And we're this. going to, well, we've got to finish one over there. And we're going to pour that into this. And I serve it sometimes with some tortilla chips. Oh, yeah, you can do a little dipping. Sure. And a garnish on the side. Garnish on the side, That's and uh, the one that I made uh, <laughs> for the show, I just grated some uh, fresh carrots and mm -hmm. some lemon peel to give it a little color. You know, you want to impress your guests. So yeah, very good. Very simple soup. All right, we're going to try this at the end of the show. I know Jocelyn's going to want to give it a taste. Of course she's going to taste <laughs> this, and she'll probably go home and make it. Probably. All right, you can find the recipe at our website, WTNH.com. And coming up next, professional gardener Colleen Plimpton has tips for your summer garden when Connecticut Style returns. Stay with us. Clouds roll in, lightning strikes, and hail starts coming down. You shot all these videos and sent them to us through Report It, and we think they're great. Thanks for being a part of the team, and keep those videos coming. The Patriots play the Buccaneers Thursday at 7.30 on MyTV9. New England meets Tampa Bay on the field. Which team will take this preseason game? Don't miss a minute of the action Thursday at 7.30 on MyTV9. I went a lot of years without seeing the dentist, and then it happened. One tooth, so painful I couldn't even sleep at night. Why do people wait so long to call the dentist? You're going to have to take care of it sometime. <laughs> Aspen Dental got me in right away. My dentist fixed me up, and now I'm sleeping like a baby. Right now, new patients get a free exam and x-rays. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL. Come on, people. Take care of your smile. Call Aspen take Dental. a little time to smile. If you've been injured, getting a free consultation with an experienced personal injury lawyer is a good place to start. But you need more than a compassionate listener. You need the power of Perkins, an entire team of professionals dedicated to one cause, getting you the money you deserve. Attorney. Case manager. Team leader. Investigator. The Perkins team knows only one way to pursue justice. All in. All in. The power of Perkins is the power to win. In the midsummer, enthusiasm for gardening can start to wilt. Absolutely. So how can you get re-energized about tending to your garden? Colleen Plimpton is, the, is a professional gardener and the author of the award-winning memoir, Mentors, 
mentors in the garden of life. And How interesting. That's right. She's back with tips for cultivating a colorful August garden. And it's tough when it isn't, we haven't gotten a lot of rain, right? It is tough. It's usually difficult in the summertime, but here's what I got to tell you. August in the garden is the wild, wild west. Really? So what we need to do is get our cowboy hat on. <laughs> Protect yourself. Get, get out our weapons <laughs> and start tending to the garden. What you want to do is get in there and deadhead and weed and prune. And then you too can have a beautiful, colorful garden. Yes, and you have quite a garden. I do. You really we have some do. Pictures, uh, this is an amazing Earlier garden. Look at this. Wow. This is my garden in early August, and as you can see, it's very colorful. And these are some of the flowers I picked just this morning in my garden. See, my garden doesn't look like this at all, Colleen. Mine doesn't look as, as colorful. I don't believe you, Jocelyn. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I've killed a lot. You've been able to really keep the flowers I may have, but I've killed a lot too. Oh, you have? Okay. I kill plants every year, believe me. But I grow so many different things, different types of annuals and perennials and vegetables and flowers and trees and shrubs, so that I always have color. And that's important. It does take some planning. When you go to purchase something in the nursery in the spring, get something that'll bloom in the fall too. So you keep that color going all season long. But you do have to keep up with the watering. There's my favorite watering can. <laughs> do you have any tips? This is your best friend because for the summer. <laughs> It's been so hot this past oh, summer. Oh my gosh, it's been warm. One of my tips is keep your watering can full so that when you go out to water, you don't have to fill it with the rain barrel water or the hose. Right. And you know what? Have a pretty watering can. I love this shade of blue. It looks good in my garden. So <laughs> I am more tempted to pick it up and use it. Okay. That's one of my tips. The other thing is make sure that you're on top of the critters. Make sure that you're using something against the slug, something organic, please, and there are products like that. Make sure that you're combating the deer. There's my good old deer repellent. Oh, yes. Yeah. We've had that before. Not just that <laughs> yep. last time. Okay. Four ingredients, easy to use, but in order to have a full colorful garden in Connecticut, you need to repel the deer and sometimes the slugs and tools it's really important to have good hand tools that you like that feel good in your hand it looks like you just pulled them out of the garden <laughs> uh, earlier I, this morning I did yes I did as a matter of fact the dirt it's still there <laughs> yeah well I, I always want to know can I still plant flowers or pl plant any kind of anything in my garden in August? You can, but there are some caveats. And one of them is you have to keep whatever you plant really well watered in August because the heavens don't always provide. And make sure that you get something containerized. Buy it in a nursery in a container like that little Creeping Jenny is. And then put it in the ground with some good compost or good organic amendments. Keep it well watered. You might want to shade it for a day or two, like with one of those lightweight lawn chairs. But other than that, yes, of course, you can plant any any time during August and September and even into October. I thought it was interesting. That was a, a Creeping Jenny. And it has a, an evil brother, yes, doesn't it? It <laughs> does. Creeping Jenny is a wonderful plant to have in your garden because she's chartreuse and she's a ground cover and she looks pretty with all kinds of plants. But her brother is Creeping Charlie and you don't want Charlie anywhere near your garden. And that's because it's, that's very invasive. It will be invasive. Yes, it will. This one you can control a little more? Yes, you can. And she looks so pretty with all kinds of flowers. And, and you shops. have and you have them everywhere in your in your garden? I have all kinds of things everywhere in my garden, yes. <laughs> I do. And you know what's what because you label everything. I do. That's another thing. Labeling is so important. Get out your good sturdy plastic labels. Get out a permanent marker that says industrial, not okay. just an ordinary Sharpie. And label what you've got and then stick it in the ground. And usually they'll stay there. Sometimes you get little neighborhood kids, you know, come along That's and lift them. Mine, oh, so for or some switch reason, them. Disappear. Or switch <laughs> them, yes. And is that what you did? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> then it's a guessing game. But it is important to label because if you grow something you just love or people come to your garden and admire it you want to be able to tell them what it is and I understand that we can actually go visit your garden oh absolutely I love to have visitors <laughs> my garden is open several times during the growing season and the next time it's going to be Saturday the 20th of August from noon until 4 everybody's welcome people come they bring their kids photographers come and we talk gardening we have a good time
Is there a cost associated no, with this? No, it's oh, free. It perfect. is. <laughs> and we get to talk to you to get some advice, right? Yep, you'll see me with this hat on. <laughs> Your cowboy hat. <laughs> My cowboy hat. <laughs> All right, that sounds terrific. Um, did we forget anything or about uh, planting this time of year? It's important to okay. wear gloves, protect your hands. Yes. It is important to have a good weeder because this is one of the really neat things. This guy gets in and gets those dandelions out and gets those other deep-rooted weeds out. So have something that's comfortable in your hand that you will use. And again, it's got some blue on it. Matches my watering can. <laughs> Very coordinated. It's pretty. And yeah. the best time to pull weeds right after when it, after it rains. Oh, when it, when you, it rains. When it rains. You, you got it. That? Yeah, because you can pull up, pull up and the roots come up with Bingo. it. Bingo. That's <laughs> right. It's easier to do it then. That's right. Keep on top of the weeding. Yes. Keep on top of the watering. And you'll have a beautiful garden. And right. next time you come, I'm going to get the, uh, the memo. The pink you guys memo? have pink memo. I didn't get the pink memo. All right. That's okay. It all coordinates. All right. We're just about out of time. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's You're great to have welcome. you, Colleen. And don't go away. There's more Connecticut style right after this. Hi, I'm Bob Alvine, president of Premier Subaru in Brantford. Now, more than ever, you want a sensibly priced car that gets top performance on the road and at the pump. Premier delivers in every way, with prices as low as $16,887 on the state's largest selection of all-wheel drive Subarus, all getting over 30 miles a gallon. It's even more of the hassle-free value you expect from the Subaru leader. Premier Subaru, Route 1, Brantford. Sure, I spent a lot of time online, but I'm not just checking sports scores here. I'm also saving money. I just got a quote for car insurance at Amica.com. It was fast and easy, and the price was great. They gave me quotes for three different coverage options, customized for me, and then recommended the best one. And then I called Amica to ask some questions, and they were even better on the phone. So, uh, check them out. Oh! Tie games. You could save hundreds with Amica Auto Insurance. Go online or call today. When you have a family, you want to be smart about spending money. These days, you want to be brilliant. The smartest thing we did was call Amica for car insurance. They really took the time to get to know us and get the coverage right. And their quote was less than what we were paying. And they found all these discounts, too. We saved even more by getting auto, home, and life together. It was a smart call. It was a genius call. <laughs> you could save hundreds with Amica Auto Insurance. Call for a free quote now. We're back guys, the yes, we certainly are. We're going to try Stephen's gazpacho. It looks yes. wonderful. Yes, and Pat has a friend, Connie, who's joined us as well in the kitchen. And Pat, where, where can we get your book? We can get it at uh, Amazon.com. We can get it at uh, BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, and PatConnor.com. Excellent. All right, Thank let's you. Try I'm giving soup. this a bite. Okay. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, this is very nice and refreshing for mm -hmm. summer, Stephen. Mm -hmm. yeah, a little colder, and, and you've been out here for a while, but a little colder would be even more refreshing. And what did you add? You added a little bit of cheese, is that right? No, that's garnish? just, that's just, that's, um, that's just some lemon peel and uh, carrot. That's oh, it, just to make it a little prettier. All right, we're out of time. Thank you for watching. Have and a make great it a great day. day. Bye. <laughs>